You're listening to Catholic Talk Radio in Chicago and the Suburbs on Relevant Radio 950 AM. Good morning. I'm Cardinal Francis George. For the next hour, the Archdiocese of Chicago will be hosting discussions on issues, people, and associations that touch our lives. Welcome to the Catholic Community of Faith. Uh, Welcome back on this Friday morning. You are listening to the radio voice of the Catholic Archdiocese of Chicago. I'm Graziano Marcheschi of St. Xavier University, thanking you for choosing to spend this part of your morning with us. It's the first full day of spring, and we're talking to a very spring-like person here, young man that I've had the pleasure of knowing since he was only 18 years old. He tells me he just turned 30. Hard to believe. That means I'm 12 years older. I I don't want to admit that. Uh, Rob Katzmark is the founder of a creative and, and creative director of Spirit Juice Studios. Uh, very much involved with new evangelization, with use of media of all kinds to largely proclaim the gospel message. So welcome, Rob. Graz, thanks for having me. I'll never forget when you came in, 18-year-old kid, applying to the Called and Gifted <laughs> program that was filled primarily of middle-aged women, and all these women, they couldn't, oh, they couldn't get enough of you. <laughs> they thought, oh, who is this cute young boy? Uh, so... Uh, it's it's a delight to see what you've done with your life in these 12 years and the contribution that you're making to uh, the life of the church and the life of the gospel, you know, as uh, incarnated here. So tell us a little bit about uh, Spirit Juice Studios. Sure, sure. Well, I just want to thank you again that uh, the lay ministry program was a very strong uh, formation for myself, you know, when I was going through it and really helped shape my faith. Uh, right now I'm working on uh, it's uh, Spirit Juice Studios. Essentially, it's a, we're a Catholic production company based on three principles. One, everything it, we have, it's a Catholic uh, mission. You know, we're, we're, we're essentially here to serve other Catholic organizations that want to do videos, that want to do, you know, different sort of film productions and help them do that better. Um, the second thing is, you know, it's it's got to make money. So, yeah. like, we can't, we have to, like, you know, to, to keep this going. And the third thing is, it has to be excellent. And so everything we do, we try to, you know, we stay up on today with the latest technology, latest camera work, all that stuff. And so, you know, for so long, the church in, in film and video has kind of been lacking in that. And so we're trying to really help push that forward. And so, you know, Catholic media isn't something that's you know, laughable to, to... Absolutely. And I've seen your work, and it's very high quality. Tell us about some of the projects that you have worked on over the years. Sure. We've worked with a ton of great people. Um, Father Barron's group, uh, Word on Fire, we work a lot with them. Hey, you were doing new evangelization before he was, you know. <laughs> with all due respect, I mean, there's nobody like Father Barron, but you were there first. Well, you know, I was just, I, I've always had a passion for doing, uh, for doing ministry and doing, you know, stuff that's a little out of the ordinary, um, using multimedia stuff. Uh, so it's been great, and they're, they're really wonderful to work with. Uh, CatholicVote.org, we work a lot with them. Working with the Knights of Columbus. Um, we're working with um, uh, NCYC, the National uh, Catholic Youth Conference. Uh, just a number of people um, that we, uh, we have. Now, where did you get your own background in all things media? Um, there's this thing that came out not too long ago. Um, it's I don't, Some people may have heard it's called the Internet. <laughs> and it has different tutorials and different training. Yeah, I have no formal training whatsoever. Come on. You really? I, yeah, I mean, I went to school for business uh, at St. Xavier. Yeah. Um, and uh, I worked corporate for a little bit and just kind of had a passion for this type of stuff. And so it was a lot of, you know, learning on my feet. And, uh, wow, amazing. You know, and being around other people that are talented. I think collaboration is key. You know, if you're like the lone, you know, the lone person out there that saved the world, like, no, that's that's not it. Like, God brought people into your life, and he brought people in your life for a reason. And, you know, it, it's, it's a mission that you work together with people. And so I've learned a lot from others. Well, that's great. So what, what are you currently working on? Um, so right now, uh, we have a couple projects with, with Father Barron. Um, we just, we're working on a project. Actually, we're just in L.A. last weekend with Outside the Box. Uh, it's a series called Encounter. Actually, I'm not even sure if I'm <laughs> supposed to talk oh. about it. But uh, sorry, Eric, if Pre- I can't. Pretend you didn't hear that out there. Anyways, it's really, it's really interesting. It's, um, 
people's encounter with, with Christ in their mm. life. And so um, it's really, really, really fun. Uh, we have some other uh, really cool projects that might bring us uh, internationally um, with the St. Jose Maria Institute. Um, what else do we have? I don't know. It, it's like we probably we have it's usually about like five or six projects going on. Yeah. At, at any given time. Now, it, it, am I correct in, in saying that when you first started out, you were doing things primarily aimed at youth? Yeah. So it's a really like quick, quick background on us. We started as actually a radio show on Relevant Radio, and, and that was geared towards towards a youth, you know, youthful audience. It was primarily music. And uh, we did that for about two and a half years or so. And eventually kind of we're on our own and we stopped doing the radio and then we're approached to do a lot of like youth video work. So we did that and that was when we basically took the opportunity to say, listen, there's a lot of Catholic organizations out there that need great videos, et cetera. Let's start Spirit Youth Studios as a Catholic production company. And so mm-hmm. that's what we push forward. And we have always kind of, I mean, I started it, I would think I was uh, 23. So I had a youthful uh, attitude towards it. So I, I did lean towards that sort of stuff, but we've kind of, have the whole gamut of stuff for young people, stuff for, you know, adults, et cetera. Yeah. So you still do things like uh, DJ work and, as well as, you know, big multimedia stuff? I, I've, I've stopped for, uh, I, I used to. Like it was, you know, and then it was kind of feeling like I was a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And I kind of made a conscious decision to say, okay, you know, because I was doing some retreats at different high schools and DJing at different high schools, et cetera. Um, and I was like, you know what? If I really want to take this seriously, if I really want to be good at film, I have to just focus solely on it. And so, uh, so I stopped. I mean, I still mm. have all the equipment. I'm getting married, so it's kind of nice. I could, <laughs> I got uh, all this stuff for for DJing for that. But, um, but yeah, I, I it's just right now just focusing on the one the video and film aspect. Well, it sounds like you're you're very intentional, very deliberate about what you're doing. So you're following the spirit on the one hand. But you're also using your own human wisdom to say, okay, how can God best use me? I'd better specialize. Exactly. I, I recall, so there's so many things that I think about from the call and gift. It's like a promo for call and gift. Yeah. But I remember you guys had talked about uh, the tennis or the priest that was going to go, go play tennis. Yeah. And he said, no, essentially, so for the listeners, um, there's a story that they told right at the beginning of the program and they, it kind of came up throughout it and talked about the end. But it was this priest who was giving this day long retreat um, or talk and he gave his opening comments. And then he was like, okay, I'll be back in the afternoon. And then right after the opening comments, a person came and said, hey, can you heal me real quick or pray over me? And he was like, no, I have to go play tennis. And then, but you come back this afternoon. And it was like this issue of debate of like, you know, but it was the importance of saying no. And I remember one thing you had brought out is that when you say no, you give someone else an opportunity to say yes. Mm. And I think God, I mean, that saying no on certain things, you have to keep yourself fulfilled and you have to keep yourself, you know, energized with the spirit. Um, but it's also just listening to where God's calling you in your life. Yeah. Uh, sad to say, I've always been better at teaching that lesson than learning it myself, <laughs> but I'm glad that you learned it. So I'm still working on it, but uh, your example is encouraging. we got to go to a break. Uh, we'll come back and continue our conversation with Rob Katzmark of Spirit Juice Studios. Don't go away. What are you doing on this first day of spring? Thank you for starting it by listening to Catholic Radio on AM 950. I'm Graziano Marcheschi, co-hosting with nobody, uh, flying solo today. Father Greg is off doing some ministry at his parish, and uh, we're grateful that you're here with us. We're talking to a fine young man whom I've had the uh, privilege of knowing for well over a decade now, uh, Rob Katzmark, who is the founder and creative director of Spirit Juice Studios, a Catholic a production company doing really fine work with media in proclaiming uh, the message of the gospel. Uh, so, Rob, uh, while we were uh, on break, you, you mentioned a, a pro-life documentary you had done. Uh, that's one of my passionate issues. Tell me about what you did. Sure, sure. So we just finished uh, working on a doc called 40. Uh, John Morales is the, was the director and producer. You might know him. He did Champions of Faith. I do, yeah. Yeah, it's a great, great, great film. And uh, yes, we, we actually been working on, well, we finished it, but uh, we worked on it for about two years. And it essentially kind of covers uh, the pro-life movement, you know, like, there's, we've had abortion for, for 40 years. You know, where are we now? It, and um, it's, it was a really great experience. Um, you know, really got to know a lot of the different pro-life leaders that are out there. And uh, so right now John's doing screenings all across the country and mm. then releasing it on DVD soon. And how long of a 
uh, production is that? It's an hour. It's an, an hour. hour. Yeah. So I worked as the uh, the cinematographer and then also as a producer. And John Morales will be doing the distribution. Yes. So he, I know he's working with uh, Jason Jones from Movie to Movement. Um, Jason, he worked on like Bella and a lot of different like um, uh, pro life films. So I'm not exactly sure how they're distributing it, um, but uh, I know they will be distributing it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, and uh, I know you're working with a priest who does hip hop. Yes. So Father Pontifex. It's, it's fun saying those two words in the same <laughs> sentence. Priest, it? hip hop, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. Father Pontifex is awesome, which is, he's also known as Father Claude Burns. He's a pastor of a church in, uh, in Indiana. And uh, he's always had a, a, a passion for doing hip hop and doing spoken word. And we started working with him. I don't know if you remember a couple years back, uh, Jefferson Batke came out with that video, Why I Love Jesus But Hate Religion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that really, you know, struck a chord in a lot of people, me especially. And I felt like I really wanted to. Wait, is he one of the priests who did sort of a rebuttal he, video? Yeah, he I was saw the, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's good. So I, I basically I was like, I called him up and I was like, hey, you want to do a rebuttal? And like within a week, we. You know, did a film to put it out there. Right now, it's like sitting a little under nine hundred thousand views. Oh. So it was really good. So we did about four more other spoken words, and we kind of took the, like the spoken word apologetic view. So it's like different things that uh, people may have issues with. So like the new evangelization, saints, uh, the saints and Mary. Uh, we even did one about like the HHS mandate, and so we put those out there. But then recently, he just put out an album, and so we're doing some music videos for the album. We put we did two music videos already. Uh, we just released one last week called Count the Cost. And, uh, yeah, you can check him out on uh, his website or ours. Do you know anything about the young man who made that original I Love Jesus But Hate Religion video, where he's at now with his life? I do. I know a little bit. And actually, Father Pontifex keeps up with him. He kind of keeps in touch with him. Um, uh, He just put out a book. He was doing – so after that came out, he's really uh, hooked up with Mark Driscoll at uh, Mars, uh, Mars Hill. And so he was touring around, giving talks. Uh, he got married. And, uh, yeah, he just put a book out that I guess is doing very well. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's like that um, – it's like all you need is Jesus and you don't need any religion. I mean, that's a whole other debate. Yeah. <laughs> we won't get into that. Yeah, it would be a whole other show. <laughs> it, it, unfortunately, it's one of the great lies of our generation, you know, that you can be spiritual without being religious because, you know, when you divorce spirituality from a community – you can go to all kinds of strange places. You know, it can be sort of uh, narcissistic. It can just be a way of espousing your own truth as opposed to God's truth. Uh, And the gift of religious uh, community, even though it's going to be flawed because it's human, you know, we all think that religion ought to be this ideal society that would automatically then exclude us because we're not ideal and perfect. You know, so how do you belong to a society that needs only perfect people uh, when you're imperfect yourself? Um, but uh, uh, if people could just realize that we do what we can and what we end up doing is really what God expects of us, uh, maybe this whole spiritual but not religious thing wouldn't be so seductive. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. <laughs> No, very well said. Very Getting well back said. to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> um, so tell us about how, you know, for, for those of us who don't do what you do, but are at the receiving end and we just sit there and we watch this hour long production and, and it never even occurs to us. How did that begin? Where was the germ of the idea? What did it take to put all those images up on film? Can you kind of take us through from uh, the dream stage to the completion stage with a project? Sure. Yeah. It it, it often feels like a mystery to a lot of people where you you watch a movie, especially like a, a Hollywood film and you're like, I don't even know how they start that. It's really simple. So, you know, it starts with an idea, it starts with a concept, and that concept could turn into a script or or an overview of whatever it is. And then you just basically, you break it down, just like if you're going to build a house. Okay, well, where do you start? And so, you know, you first figure out, okay, well, where are we going to... Where are we going to shoot at? What people are we going to shoot? And so you kind of get all the, the pieces together. And then a producer is a very key thing. A, lot of, a producer is a kind of a nebulous term. People don't know exactly what that means. Essentially, it's the person that gets everyone together. Okay, I know a director and he knows, you know, the a casting person. And so this every production is different and everything works differently. But essentially, you get all the pieces together and then you hopefully get a good camera person and a good director of photography that's going to shoot it well and a good director. And then you have all these images. They say a film gets made three times. First in pre-production, 
when just like planning it all together, getting all the things. Second, when you're actually filming because things can go wrong and you know things change all the time. And then the third time is when you're editing it in, in post production. And so after you do all the filming, you bring it into the studio. Hopefully you have a fast computer because if not, you're going to be <laughs> banging your head against the wall. And um, you know you, you just you, you put the edit together. And so edits can be done two different ways. If you have a hard script and you you went out, you got this shot, you got that shot. All you're doing is just really assembling it to like like how it should be in documentaries it's usually a little different because you're going out you're getting a bunch of interviews and then you have to listen to all these interviews okay what what sound bites good what contributes to the story that i want to tell and then you put that together it's, it's a documentaries are kind of like uh, sculptors you know sculptor starts with a big block of yeah of, of um, stone and he takes away what he doesn't want takes away what he doesn't want and documentaries are like that you have all this information you take away what you don't want and what you want to show to the other people I, I think in, in documentaries, the work of the editor is maybe most apparent because I often watch them and I hear these little sound bites and like they're interviewing two or three different people about the same thing and they weave their responses, you know, a couple sentences at a time and you would think that they had been scripted that way. And obviously they were just, you know, free-flowing conversations and now some editor has sat down and found the exact pieces that work well together and put them together. I'm like, man, that must have taken hours. Yeah, oh, not, not hours, weeks. <laughs> Days, weeks, yeah. Months. yeah. <laughs> Very true. Um, so, so an editor is really an important person in the whole creative process, isn't he? He is, yeah. And, and that could be done in two different ways. You could get the um, – so sometimes the director will construct it. So after you get all the interviews, you get them transcribed. And so the director would go through and read all the scripts and mm. pull out all the stuff. Or you'd have – the editor go watch through everything or, you know, it could be a mixture of both. Um, I often find it easier to watch the stuff because it's not all about what the person says. It's how they say it. Yeah. And so there could be something you read on paper that you're like, mm. but when you're watching it, they're crying and like, you know, <laughs> like it's like very impactful. And so, uh, yeah, it, it's it, the editor's job is very important. Yeah. Um, what for you is the uh, the most rewarding part of being involved in this work? For me, it's always so like you have the idea, you, you, you go out and you shoot it, and then like you start to bring it back to the studio. And, and then for me, it, the most exciting part is the first rough cut because that's when you like you actually see all your ideas come together. You know, it's not done, you know, there's still work to improve, but you're like, this idea that was in my head looks like this now, and it's uh. I, to me, that's I get the most excited. That or if you're on set and like, there's just like you know you just capture this crazy cool image and you just you just get you so jazzed. Yeah. Do you ever do things that are are not documentaries, but that would be more like what you would typically see on TV or in a movie? You know, a more narrative kind of a script. Yeah, yeah, we've done uh, several. We've done uh, To Be Born, uh, Zombies vs Jesus, which actually which sounds. <laughs> It, it, it actually won uh, Best Short Film at the John Paul II Film Festival. Cool. So it's it's based on like the Eucharist and stuff. What's the thing with zombies nowadays? Well, the thing is zombies, zombies reached their peak. The next thing is, it was vampires were like on the rise. And then after Twilight was done, vampires started to sink. Zombies been on the rise. Zombies are at the top. They're starting to go down. My prediction is the next thing is dragons 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 are the next like cool hip thing all right ladies and gentlemen the next big thing <laughs> dragons you heard it here first <laughs> all right we'll be watching for yeah that. watch out yeah i'm sorry so I, I i interrupted you so you were talking about the the uh, jesus uh zombie oh, yeah. movie yeah so uh so zombies versus jesus that was another uh, narrative thing so we i do have a passion in our team at spirit juice uh greg krayeski uh melinda collins uh, that we, we really do like doing narrative stuff. The problem is, uh, going back to our model, you know, we need to make money to keep doing this. Yeah. Because we, we've been around for six years, and to invest in technology, and you have to make money to, to do so that. So who would fund a project like that? Well, it doesn't come around too often. So, like, uh, we work with Outside the Box and a lot of the narrative pieces that we've done. And so usually those pieces are done as a catechetical tool. And so it's like... Zombies vs. Jesus was really based. It's like a Euchar teaching about the Eucharist and how important it is, and so they use that um, for in their you know youth ministry programs and stuff. Cool. So, yeah. um, what wh where do you see yourself going? Say in the next five years. It's a great question. Well, um, I see myself still happily married, <laughs> which I'm looking forward to to Kimberly. Yeah, he's getting married in August, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You know, when when you started calling Gifted, my daughter Amanda. 
uh, ran into you. She's like, Dad, he's really cute. <laughs> you were two years younger than she was, though, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, but 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 I heard that from not just uh, uh, women your, your age, but the, those who were a good bit older. So he's going off the market, ladies. <laughs> he's going off the market as of August. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, five years. You know, it's it's a mixture of being open to where God's calling me, and also having a vision to where I want you know things to go. Because I think God speaks to people in their vision. So I hope that um, Spirit Juice Studios is something that uh, continues twofold. Where it's at, we're, we're producing a lot more of our own content that we're starting to do through Spirit Juice Films, um, but that also continue to serve the church. You know, like I had a. a I mentioned the NCYC, the National Catholic Youth Conference. Well, when I first started, that was the goal. Because it's like, you know, 25,000 youth across the country. It's like, I want to do their promo. I want it like, that yeah. was like the, the, the top of the thing. And so like, we've been working with them for a few years now and they're fantastic. And so it's like, okay, well, what's the next thing? My next thing is I want to work with, with P. Fran. <laughs> with Pope Francis, I was gonna say that. Yeah, I, like my in five years, uh, my goal, and I know this is crazy far fetched, especially because like you know out there, the Vatican, they would just want to work with Italian people. But I want to be able to do like videos with Pope Francis and be like, oh, you know, like yeah, we're gonna do a video on this. I mean, why not? Like, so could you put something together without him? Could you assemble footage and then send it to them and say, here's what we can do. We could, yeah, yeah. I, and the thing is, I don't even know what that means exactly. Doing videos with him, uh, we have a few contacts that you know that p- people that work at the Vatican. So I mean, I certainly would like to explore that. I don't want to. The thing is, it's not about like I. It's it, you know, like I could very easily be like, well, I want to work with Pope Francis, and you know, this is. But like, I feel that I'm I'm being called to do that. So I'll see how God at the right time, the right moment. You know, it's. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited about the possibility. Uh, does your fiance work with you on this, or does she have a real job? She has a real job, <laughs> but I do like she. Uh, I've trained her because uh, I just work so much, and so I don't see her too often. A lot of times, I'm going on jobs that are, you know, I'm gone for a week or whatever it is, and so I've trained her to use a camera enough that we could say, okay, Kim, she's gonna run, uh, she's gonna run BTS or take photos and stuff. So it's nice. So I, I, she's she is involved in the in the process. Yeah, it's great. Now, how did you end up starting to work with uh, Father Baron? We started work with them. How did it begin? We did. We cut a couple trailers when they're working on Catholicism, and then we covered uh, some of their events. And then, actually, it was I was at the Catholic New Media Conference um, at the SQPN put on, and I, I gave a talk on Catholics on YouTube. And uh, I kind of, <laughs> I pretty much called out all the top five Catholic YouTube people and you'd probably know most of them <sighs> and really just dug into them. But I, I did, I didn't, I did it in a way of like, if I'm with my family and like my mom or my sister has something in her teeth or like, you know, a, yeah, yeah. I, I did it loving like, Hey, let sure. me get that out of your, you know, let me help you. Yeah. And so uh, I remember father Steve, he, 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 I guess he took notes. He's like, wow. He goes, that took a lot of guts to say all that <laughs> stuff. And uh, he goes, Maybe he's got some to, something else to say, and so uh, that's what spurred the big. We're working on a project with him called Priest Prophet King. It was a big project we filmed last summer. It'll be coming out in the fall. So cool. Well, uh, if people want to see your work, give us your website where they could find some samples. Sure. So spiritjuicestudios dot com has all of our uh, client stuff for all of our Catholic organizations, and Spirit Juice Films has all the stuff that we've created on our own. Spiritjuicestudios uh, dot com and spiritjuicefilms dot com dot com. Well, we want to thank Rob Katzmark not only for being here with us today, but for the fine work he's doing. And we thank you for listening. This is Graziano Marcheschi thanking you and wishing you a blessed weekend. This is Cardinal Francis George. Thank you for being with us this past hour on Relevant Radio 950 AM. Join us every day, Monday through Friday, as the Archdiocese of Chicago presents the Catholic Community of Faith. Have a wonderful day, and God bless you.